All right, everybody, this is Ross. So today is moving day for the fig trees. Uh, we essentially every year have to shuffle or move our fig trees into some place that stays above 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, ideally, you don't let them drop below 15. That's when the roots can start to take damage of these potted trees. So I'm unfortunately not in a location um, that uh, stays above 15 degrees Fahrenheit all winter. In fact, we get down to about zero here in, in zone 7A. So it's really important for someone like me to be able to move these or at least have them in the ground and protect them in some way so that they can get through the winter time. So that's what we're doing today. We're moving them. Um, in fact, I've already moved quite a bit of them um, into the greenhouse. We have a number of my 10 gallon and 15 gallon size pots. We're also moving some of these five gallon trees and I've selected these here for a particular reason. I'll get into that in a minute. But what we're, we're also gonna talk about in this video is actually the greenhouse and getting that greenhouse closed up for the winter time because it's not just enough to have them in a greenhouse. Usually your greenhouses, unless they're, you know, super greenhouses in some way, they're usually not very insulative, right? A greenhouse is a great source of heat because of the greenhouse effect, right? During the day, it warms up. But at night, when it's really cold and when the temperatures really matter for these figs, right? We gotta keep them above 15 that greenhouse suffers, right? It's not the warmest place in the world. So what we need to do is insulate it for a lot of us. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you the steps that I'm going through to ensure success if you're growing them in a greenhouse and getting them an early head start. That's the whole purpose of a greenhouse is one, you can use it as a storage area, which is sort of what I'm converting it into, uh, but it really acts as an early head start. The rest of these trees here, you see these, these smaller five gallon size pots, the experimental varieties. I have some root stock right here, uh, right in front of you guys. These are larger pots, but because they're root stock, I don't need them to be awake early. In fact, I'd rather have them be awake sometime after frost, because that's really when you do your grafting, is after frost, when the temperatures have certainly warmed up. We also have some of these one gallon young pots over here in bins. These are also going to go underneath the sunroom. And the sunroom here, just for everybody, you know, everybody knows, this is sort of like a root cellar. So the reason I chose this area, one is that it's right here. So that's obviously really important for moving so many trees. But also, it doesn't really get too warm in here. It doesn't get too cold in here. So it, def it definitely stays above that 15 degree temperature that we want. In fact, it really stays above about 30 for the most part. Um, I'm also going to throw my pomegranates in there. So someone's always going to ask, you know, what do I do with my pomegranates? I treat them the same way I do my figs. And it's just really, they're a little bit more delicate in that sense, because if you give them a head start in your greenhouse, like you could your fig, they just leaf out very quickly and they need a lot more water. So I find they're a bit more uh, high maintenance in the greenhouse and just not necessarily as worth it. So what I like to do is actually put them underneath the sunroom. We've yet to do our pruning on this, but what I'm probably gonna do, cause they're so tall, is I'm either gonna lie them down on their side. I mean, these trees are probably roughly 10 feet tall or I'm gonna just draw a line here, imaginary line, and just make a cut across. And that's actually probably what I'm gonna to have to do. There's no other way around it because they are just indeed so tall. But probably around maybe the six foot mark, I'm gonna cut them all and then uh, store them probably on their side because they're just not gonna fit in this storage area. And they'll just kind of get stacked on their side, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so I have the, these five gallon size pots. I have the larger root stock we showed you, the one gallon size pots. Something really that's another point worth mentioning is that if you have a tree or something here, let's say it needs a lot more attention throughout the winter time, you know, cause you gotta have to water some of these um, throughout the winter. Before I show you the greenhouse, I wanna mention this. You know, it gets a little dry in here, especially throughout the course of the winter. So what you really wanna do is you have, take some mulch here 
and I'm just gonna sprinkle this mulch on top of all the pots. So they've all been sitting out here in our fall. It's been quite rainy. So the soil is saturated, right? It's really well watered. If it's not, water them all in real well before you put them away. Cover them with the mulch. That mulch is gonna keep that water, that moisture in the soil for as long as possible. And in fact, if you put enough mulch on these trees, you won't have to water a single tree the entirety of the winter time. And I've done this for multiple years, and that's really like six months of them being in this, this, uh, this root cellar here. So I just leave them in there, I forget about them, I come back six months later, I take them out, and then I give them a nice water. Now, if you have trees, like I mentioned, that are maybe are a bit more sensitive, they're smaller, they don't have as much soil, like these one gallon size pots, they're more sensitive. So what I'm gonna do when I put all this stuff away is I'm gonna move them all underneath here and I'm gonna put the really sensitive plants right at the entrance of this that are easy access so that when I do water my trees this winter time, because these younger ones here in these smaller pots, they're gonna need at least one, maybe two waterings this year. Again, mulch them, care for them, even these, uh, you know, these eggplants I dug up, these peppers I dug up, they're probably a bit more sensitive. So I am going to certainly have them in a more accessible place. Now, moving on to the greenhouse, because it's getting actually kind of cold, man. I don't know what happened to this weather. It just turned from a decent sunny day to windy and cloudy. But here we have actually the greenhouse, and I have a couple more pots I need to put in here. But... We've already pretty much situated them in here. I mean, if you remember from other videos here, guys, other years that we've done this, there's like nothing in here. It's insane. Um, I really went crazy and sold a whole bunch of my trees, guys. Um, and this is really all that's left. <laughs> so we have basically them all in the ground, you know? And uh, for me, it's good reason. You know, for maybe somebody else, it may not make as much sense, but this certainly makes sense. You know, having them in the greenhouse in pots, this gives them an immense head start to the season. You know, a lot of these are gonna start fruiting for me like July 1st. It may even be a bit more dramatic this upcoming season just because of how much is not in here. I mean, how much attention I'm gonna be able to give these trees as well. So we don't really have a whole lot in here, but what I've essentially done is stack them up. This is always a good method of storage. You put the bigger trees in the bottom, the mid-sized trees on top, and then you could fit even smaller trees on top and just keep stacking them high. I've had them like four or five trees stacked high in the past. Um, so that's all I've really done here is just move them in here, get them situated. You know, the trees on the lower tier of the stacking, they have a colder soil. So they're gonna wake up later. They're not gonna need as much water, but anything on this top tier that's smaller, especially these five gallon pots, these smaller trees here that I have elected to move about 10 of them in here. You know, they're really gonna suffer in this greenhouse in the spring if you don't give them enough water because it's gonna be very warm in here with the help of this heater, right? I have a space heater in here, guys, that warms this up. Plus there's the greenhouse effect during the day that warms up this greenhouse. And I just turn on the heater at night to keep the temperatures in here about above 50. And if you do that, you have success. You don't want to turn up the heater too much, I've, I've learned over the years. But so we've got everything in here, essentially. The, the only last thing to do, and I haven't done this, is actually get myself the mulch on top of some of these pots. And that's all it is. That is really key. That mulch, guys, especially in this greenhouse environment, it's, it's insanely beneficial because that water, you just can't water them enough in the spring. I mean, you gotta be out here like every, every other day almost. Um, so that mulch really goes a long way. Another thing I did on top of this greenhouse is we taped up the windows and I've actually bolted them in. Um, so there's no chance that they can fly away, right? You wanna really make this thing as sturdy as possible. It's a piece of crap, you know? Uh, it, it does its job. I've had it for a number of years, but you know, this thing is not certainly the, the best greenhouse in the world you can have. So we beefed it up a bit. Now, the only last step is that we're gonna close this door. 
and we're going to put this tarp over the top. And you guys have probably seen that in the, in the past. Essentially, I have some, you know, some of this plastic twine, and then we get ourselves some nails. You tie the the um, the twine to the nails, put the green the uh, tarp over top of the greenhouse, and then you do the same thing on the other side, and that keeps the greenhouse or the tarp in place, not blowing away. And you want it tight. You want it taut. You want it tight. Because the whole idea is that if you cover the top of the greenhouse, especially with this tarp, this is a pretty thick one too, guys. You know, get yourself a nice thick tarp, maybe even a concrete blanket or something, but that's really gonna insulate this greenhouse super well. Now, what it's gonna do is block out all the sun, but you don't need the sun. We, in fact, we don't need the sun at all until about March, right? In March, when we take off the tarp, the sun comes in, this thing heats up a lot during the day and these trees wake up. You don't want your trees in any of these storage conditions here, guys, whether that's your root cellar, your greenhouse, your shed, your garage, your basement, you don't want them waking up in like January or something. So really, really important that some of you guys always do every single year. And I always get the question, well, Ross, what do I do? because now my trees are awake and I have no idea how, what to do. Cause now my, you know, my trees are awake and I'm like, well, they're in my basement and there's no light there. So basically at that point, you're kind of just screwed. I mean, I'm, so, I'm you know, sorry to say it, but that's sort of the last thing you want. And if it does happen, you want to give them as much sunlight as possible. Maybe even shuffle them in and out in natural light. And of course, put them somewhere in a colder environment until it's like March or April or May or whenever your last frost is. Because ideally, as I said, you don't want these things waking up too soon. A frost could come in, um, they're just in an environment that's not suitable and you get growth, let's say, in the beginning of the year that's just really weak, really spindly. It ruins your entire season. So that's a huge mistake people make, as I said. I'm gonna finish stacking these trees up in here, getting those five gallon pots I want in here. Again, I'm gonna put the tarp over this, close the door, I'm gonna call it a day. And uh, tomorrow, I guess, or some other day, we have to move the rest of those trees underneath the sunroom with the pomegranates. I gotta really get everything mulched. Um, I gotta organize actually underneath the sunroom in that root cellar because it's it's a mess um, just to give myself as much space as possible and then uh, the last thing here of the winter prep is just to use the cut and cover method we've already cut them back these in-ground trees straw tarp hold down the straw with something very uh, heavy like these bricks as you see here these red bricks bags of soil, bags of rock, sandbags, you know, whatever. And we'll be done. We'll be, uh, everything will be situated here for really the next five months at least. Um, yeah. So anyway, stay tuned for those videos, guys. We'll see everybody soon. Um, again, today was moving day. I hope you guys can hire some movers or something. All right. Take care. We'll see you soon.